really excited about this uh, recent publication of ours, uh, which is really the culmination of at least eight years uh, of work uh, that starts uh, from really fundamental basic science. And that's work that we've been doing, as I said, for, for at least eight years. But in this publication, uh, we take that basic science and we start to move it in a much more translational direction. We start moving into uh, experiments and ideas that uh, could have real clinical application. And so the, the video that we're going to see here shows uh, the, the basic science part of this, where what we can do is control how many peptides come together and organize themselves into a nanostructure. And that nanostructure that they form uh, controls both materials properties as well as the, in the end the, the biological function. Uh, the movie starts off by showing uh, a, a single peptide and the different portions of that molecule. Uh, one portion of which is hydrophilic or, or water loving, the other portion is hydrophobic or water hating. This green portion is the important part of the molecule for this paper which is the angiogenic portion that's going to grow blood vessels. And these peptides come together or self-assemble uh, through what we call a hydrophobic sandwich. Uh, and many of these peptides to come together uh, and begin forming a, a fiber. And we have looked a lot into exactly how these peptides come together. Uh, and here the video shows that it's an anti-parallel beta sheet hydrogen bonding network that's formed from these peptides. So at first these peptides are in equilibrium with one another where they basically maintain a rather uh, small sh uh, size. But when we add uh, the right kinds of salts to these things, they expand into uh, much larger fibers. And more and more of these fibers are created uh, until eventually the fibers uh, cross-link into a hydrogel. And it's that hydrogel that forms, that then has the materials properties uh, necessary for a, a useful clinical application. And it's those hydrogels that we uh, inject into animals and then look at uh, the body's response uh, to those hydrogels uh, in vivo. As Jeff mentioned, the process of angiogenesis is essentially wherein blood vessels grow from existing vasculature towards any disease site. In the research that we've done, we've been very interested to develop new blood vessels or neoangiogenesis to allow tissue recovery, to increase blood perfusion to ischemic or low blood flow tissues to promote tissue regeneration. What we have here are these injectable scaffolds, uh, which is entirely in this region, which shows a very high level of angiogenesis as seen in these blood vessels, both in circular cross-section as well as in oblique cross-sections, which suggests that we're having blood vessels grow from the external tissue into uh, these scaffolds. What's very interesting is where we can take these materials next. Can we use these materials for hind limb ischemia or for myocardial infarctions, essentially to regenerate tissue after there's an acute loss of blood flow to a specific region?